God transformed Gideon from a coward into a bold warrior. He wants to do the same for you spiritually. Learn how next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. In Hebrews 11, verse 32, the Apostle Paul discusses uh, faith, and he specifically mentions Gideon as a, a mighty man of faith. But if you look at Gideon's life, you'll find, uh, let's say, before he became a, a hero, he had uh, many uh, problems and, and certainly some cowardly uh, characteristics. But how, do you how does God uh, lead him to, to change all that? That's a question we all need to understand, because God wants each one of us to learn the lesson of Gideon and be like Gideon. Certainly, in the end of our spiritual lives, He wants that very much. So, the thing about it is, we have to be willing to let God guide us. We have to be humble and teachable, because Paul did also say that it is impossible to, to please God without faith. You simply cannot please Him. So we all start, though, with a little amount of faith, sometimes maybe even no faith at all. But in, it, in some ways, Gideon was, was cowardly, and we can all relate to that, because we all have our cowardice at times and have to work to overcome that. And that's why uh, God uh, works with us today, if we will let Him. He wants to remove those cowardly acts. And uh, so I want to talk to you about Gideon and this mighty man of faith. It says in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11, Paul talks also about the examples of the uh, Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. And Paul says, Now they were written for our admonition, upon whom the uh, ends of the world are come, and that is specifically for this end time. So we need to look at this very closely. God revealed a lot of prophecy to the prophets in the Old Testament, or the Hebrew Bible. The prophets wrote the books of the former prophets, which uh, this Gideon example is a part of those prophets. It was all written by prophets when it's prophetic history. In Luke 24 and verse 25, Christ said, O fools, and, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So do you believe all that the prophets have spoken? Well, how far back is He going? Well, all the way back to the beginning. He says in verse 27, Christ does, And beginning at Moses, that's the five, first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, and all the prophets, next come the former prophets, or the earlier prophets, He expounded unto them in all the Scriptures the things concerning Himself. Even prophecies are in the former prophets about Christ Himself. So it's, it's about this end time primarily. The former prophets are mostly prophetic. Well, what are the former prophets? Well, they're the books of Joshua, Judges, Kings, and Samuel. And uh, many people say, well, they're only history. But that is dangerously wrong, because it destroys people, people's faith, because there are many obvious pro uh, prophecies there for this end time, for you and I to learn from. Uh, and, and to uh, be able to teach and, and uh, get the, God's message to this world. So, after Joshua and the elders died, then uh, everything really went in the wrong direction with Israel. And uh, there was a change of government, and they were under judges, which this example of Gideon is a part of. That book of Judges, which is the bloodiest book in the Bible. And it's because of their government, really, their, their lack of government, because they had judges and you had to voluntarily come to them, and the people didn't. So you can imagine the, all the catastrophes that Israel had, and they had to learn some terrible lessons. 
So this is a book of prophecy for us today. There are, the Judges were over 300 years of history, and you could say, well, it's like the Dark Ages of Israel. Let's go back to Judges 6 and verse 1. Judges 6 and verse 1, it talks about the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God, and that, that's where the problem always begins. And then verse 3, so it was whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up, and the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. In other words, they would just destroy all their produce and take what they needed, and they were just as numerous as locusts. There were so many of them. And there was nothing that Israel could do about it. So what was, what was Israel to do? Well, that's where Gideon comes in. And you, God lists all the examples where He brought them out of Egypt and did all of these wonderful things for them. But they fell right back into sinning against God. Verse 12 says, And the angel of the Eternal appeared to him and said to him, The Eternal is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now this is right at the very beginning, and he's calling Gideon, a mighty man of valor. Now, the, uh, the word valor just means courage, especially in battle. We're always in battles, especially spiritually. But was, was uh, Gideon a, a man of valor? Was he a mighty man of faith? It's really the same thing, same meaning. Was he really a mighty man of faith at that time? No, he wasn't, but God wanted to get his mind on that and on becoming a, a mighty man of faith. God knew that Gideon could do that if he just would listen to him. So we have battles all the time, and we need powerful faith. Over in Revelation 1 and verse 6, God says, he, is, he has made us kings and priests. We're really not kings and priests yet, but God says He wants us to get that in our minds. We are kings and priests in embryo if we're obeying God, but we're not yet kings and priests in His family in the future as spirit beings. We're not there yet. But God sees us as being there, just as He saw Gideon doing great things, and He will use you, He'll use me, He'll use any of us if we will submit to Him, and we will become mighty in faith. If we keep working on that, we definitely will. So that is an important lesson for us to learn. And, and, but God took Gideon and just step by step led him away from his cowardly acts. And he was. Certainly, you, some people could have labeled him a coward. But God saw his potential, and He saw his attitude, and He knew He could use this man. And that He did, indeed. So uh, how, how weak are we in faith? Well, we all have failures in faith, but we should also have some really strong faith, powerful faith, if we're uh, committing ourselves to God in His way. Notice what it says in uh, verse 13, the last part of it, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Eternal has forsaken us, and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Well, what about that now? Is that from a man of valor? Did, he, did God really forsake Israel? Well, He's right there with Gideon now to save them. No, He didn't forsake them. And if you look at in Hebrews, that same book I referred to before, there is a Greek expression which says, I will never, never, never forsake you. That's what God says about us. I'll never, never, never forsake you. You can believe that from God. You can believe that, and you must believe it. We all must believe it if we're going to build the kind of faith that Gideon did build. So uh, that we all have our weaknesses, and we have to be careful how uh, and not get away from God. But notice what he said in verse 14, Then the Eternal turned to him and said, Go in the might of yours, 
and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh, my eternal, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. That happens to be the U.S. today. But my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. <laughs> That's what Gideon said. And the Eternal said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Now this is, this is amazing information for all of us to see and understand. How can Gideon was saying, Well, how can I save Israel? I'm from the weakest clan in all of Manasseh, and I'm at least in my own father's house. And God says, Look, Gideon, I'm going to be with you, and you're going to conquer the Midianites. And so you and I need to really learn a lesson from this. We can come from the lowest clan in the, on earth, and the least in our Father's family on earth. We can just be the lowliest person on earth, and if God is with us, we can have mighty faith, the very faith that Jesus Christ Himself had. Galatians 2 and verse 20. You should read that. God is with us. If we let Him lead us, we will do amazing things. Verse 17 says, Then said he to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. <laughs> does that sound like a mighty man of faith? Not so, so much, does it? Verse 18, Do not depart from here. I pray until I come to you, and bring out my offering, and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. So he went to, to get all of the broth and the pot and all of that to make an offering to God. He wanted to see a miracle in this offering. And so God said in the last part of verse 21, after his hand touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire rose out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread, and the angel of the Eternal departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Eternal. Well, I would think so. <laughs> but he perceived that. So Gideon said, Alas, O Eternal God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And then the Eternal said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Don't be afraid. God was removing the fear from Gideon, getting the fear out of his life, so he could have a relaxed faith and just believe God. Step by step, God was making Gideon into a mighty man of faith and valor, which is really the same thing. You have to have courage to, in your faith to make it work for you. You'd think, well, now then, Gideon, he has enough of a sign there, and he doesn't need anything more, but he didn't have enough signs yet. <laughs> he said that uh, he, he, about going into battle, he knew he was going to lead a, a, a military army to fight the Midianites, and he wanted to make sure that he had faith. And he really was a mighty man of valor. Notice verse 36, Then Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, if you will do that, well, now, that's not a man of mighty faith, saying, well, now, if you will do it like you say, well, listen, if God says it and you have great faith and, and uh, are totally committed to God in believing His Word, you never say, if he will do what he says. He always does what he says. Gideon had to learn that. He didn't know it. If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. Well, now, he should have removed that if, because you can prove that God will fulfill every word that he has proclaimed, every single word of the well, what is called the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, uh, how many of us have had that uh, big if 
in our lives. Well, if you will do what you say, God, if you will, and that is not a faithful statement. So he really wanted to believe God, but he wanted signs. So notice what he said here. Uh, then Gideon said to God, If you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said, look, I shall put a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece only, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will save Israel by my hand, as you have said. Then I'll know you'll do what you said. <laughs> and it was so. Verse 38, When he rose early the next morning and squeezed the fleece together, he wrung the dew out of the fleece, a bowl full of water. And here everything else was dry all around. Now that was quite a miracle, quite a miracle. And you think, well, now Gideon is ready to fight the battle for God. But he wanted one more sign, a third sign. Notice what he says in verse 39, Then Gideon said to God, Now do not be angry with me, and let me speak just once more, just once more. Let me test, I pray, just once more with the fleece. Let it now be dry only on the fleece, but on all the ground let there be dew. And God did that that night. It was dry on the fleece only, but there was dew on all the ground. Now, most people don't really know God the way He is and how He works with us. He's a Father. He works with uh, bringing His children to Him and into His family. That's the way God is. He, re he will reason with you. Gideon had had two signs, and he just had to have another one. Why was he still not a mighty man of faith? He just needed one more sign, and he really did begin to express courage and faith in God. And he calls his people soldiers, soldiers for God. Let's look at Judges 7 and verse 2. Let's see how God built faith in this man. Verse 2 of chapter 7, And the Eternal said unto Gideon, The people that are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Well, my own hand has saved me. So here, here's what happened. Uh, there were 32,000 of them, and God says, Well, uh, if, if, if we have that many, they're going to think they won the battle and give themselves credit, and they won't give me credit. So he said, We'll have to uh, pare this number down. And so that's what he did. He, he cut them down. Verse 3 says he cut them down to 22,000. 22,000. And uh, you know why he did that? Because they were fearful and afraid. And he says, let's just get rid of them if they're fearful and afraid, because we need people who have strong faith and that will not, not be afraid to fight the enemy. But he said, God says, because they're fearful and afraid, I want you to send them back. They sent them home. Go on, go, go back home. You're, you're, uh, this is not where, what we're looking for. He said that uh, God went on to talk about these spiritual Marines and physical Marines, and he kept trying and testing them. And then he decided, well, okay, uh, we're going to have to reduce this number still more. In verses 5 and 6 it says, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men, but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Now think about that. Here they were on their way, and they wanted to get water. They needed water. And that's when we get to verse 6. And uh, verse 7 continues this about the three hundred men. Verse 7 uh, reads uh, this way, And the Eternal said unto Gideon, By three hundred men that lapped will I save you. What God was concerned about is the, the men that went up there and got down on their hands and knees and drank uh, by, uh, just drank from the, uh, the uh, stream. Well, they, they, were, uh, they were not as eager, God thought, and, and knew that they weren't as eager as the other 300 who just went to uh, that stream, kind of scooped some water up into their mouth and then some more, and they drank that way, and then they were across the stream. And they, they didn't want to wait for the Midianites. They wanted to go after them. They were eager to do battle. 
because of their faith. See, the God cho chose the faithful ones, the little flock. Today, that's exactly the way it is in His church. He chooses a little flock, not a great flock, a little flock of people who trust Him and believe in Him and are eager to do battle for Him. Eager. Let me read verse 7 again. And the Eternal said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into your hand. And let all the other people go every man into his place. These three hundred men were not going to wait for the Midianites. See, they were, they were ready to go. They just, the others just didn't feel personally secure. They didn't have that mighty faith that Gideon had developed, and God taught him. They weren't eager to do battle. They weren't eager to fight, knowing that God would be with them, and this He'd already promised to give them victory. And He, but He wanted them to know He was going to give them the victory. The only thing they needed to bring was strong faith, mighty men of faith. God that wants us to have that faith, or He won't give us those victories. He simply won't do it. He loves the attitude of these men, and uh, really knew that he could uh, rely on those men to win this battle. Just three hundred, and you think, well, uh, uh, if you have, well, we have such a little flock, we have such a, so few people, we can't do anything, God. If you're relying on yourself, that's well, that's that's okay. But if you're relying on God, if if you're just one person, you're a majority. You're more powerful than anybody else. God wants us to see that. The rest are as nothing. They're as nothing. God will never, never, never forsake you if you trust Him. But you have to build that mighty faith with His power. But what a wonderful leadership that gives God. If you do that, you'll step out, you'll go on the offensive, you'll do whatever God says, and you won't wait for the enemy to come to you. You'll be going to Him to win the battle. Notice verse 9, final verse here, Arise, get you down into the host, for I have delivered it into your hand. See, you get down there now, I have delivered them, I have already beaten them. But God says, OK, the battle is, your, is, is, is yours, and you are going to win, if you trust in Me, if you are a mighty man of faith and valor and courage. That's what God is looking for. If God says, if you will do that, you will win your battles, you will, you will win your victories, and you will be, well, like a person in battle. That makes them happy to win victories. And this applies to business. It applies to anything. I mean, look, if you have God with you, you can fight anybody, any time. You can fight any, any, anything, any time, and you will win if you trust God. You see, but when Israel started sinning, well, you can see why God let them get in trouble, because only then would they cry out to Him, and come to Him, at least some of them, like Gideon, who had a good attitude, but was weak in faith, and cowardly, frankly. But aren't we all, at times, cowardly, more than we should be? God says, He will remove that from you and give you a relaxed faith, and you will win your battles, whether it's in business, or spirit, your spiritual life, or whatever it is. God will give you the victory, and you'll have the very faith of Jesus Christ living in you, and you'll step out on faith like Christ Himself did. You'll have that very same faith. What a wonderful truth to, to understand today, but so few understand this. You need to understand it now, and so do I. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Request What is Faith to learn God's definition of this life-changing character trait. Also request Gerald Flurry's book on Hebrews and a reprint article titled Offensive Warfare. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Order now.
The preceding program was a paid presentation of the Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.